Hi guys, it's Mel from Mad Exotics and Reptile Care here. Today I'm going to be having a chat to you guys about coccidiosis and crypto. We have actually noticed a spike in cases around Toowoomba, uh, Ipswich, even Brisbane at the moment. So it's a good time to have a bit of a chat um, about what it is, how it spreads and how you can prevent it and treat it. So bearded dragons are susceptible to a range of parasites in the wild and in captivity. All reptiles of each order can and do harbour parasites and bacteria ordinarily. So it is important to make sure you're keeping up with good reptile hygiene, thorough cleaning, washing your hands with every interaction with your pet. Now, what is coccidiosis? It is an illness that is caused by an overload of the coccidian parasites, such as Elmeria, which is a species of protozoa, which are a single-celled organism, that are typically responsible um, for coccidiosis in reptiles. A particularly dangerous subspecies to bearded dragons is Cryptosporidium, aka Crypto, which you might hear a lot about in American sites or Facebook pages, but it's not that often talked about in Australia. Often these animals can be asymptomatic and show no clinical signs at all, but once the parasite load or burden becomes too high, the animal then declines and becomes symptomatic and does show clinical signs. Bearded dragons in particular are very susceptible to this and they do struggle to overcome this illness and quite often it can be fatal if it is diagnosed too late or left too long. Now, how it's spread or acquired. Coccidiosis is actually spread through fecal matter or anything that comes into contact uh, with contaminated waste material. The parasites live and breed with inside the intestinal tract of the animal. They multiply and then are expelled in the fecal waste, aka the poo. Coccidiosis does cause a severe irritation to the intestinal tract and gut lining of the bearded dragon. And it's important to know that it is highly, highly transmissible to other lizards. So just another reason why we say never cohabit bearded dragons. One, they don't like it. Two, it makes them sick. Now, some symptoms. Bearded dragons and all reptiles are exceptionally good at hiding signs of pain and discomfort. Even if your bearded dragon is infected, it may not show any clinical signs or it may be easy to miss them. Some signs to keep an eye on are the loss of or reduction of appetite, increased lethargy, regurgitating food. That's actually one of the first signs people will see. A change in fecal consistency, which is usually runny or diarrhea. Dehydration and also severe dehydration. This can also cause sunken eyes, a depressed mood, and also there is often blood or mucus in the fecal output. Now, veterinary treatment is a must for coccidiosis and hydration is vital. Rapid late loss and severe dehydration is very common when the illness becomes acute or clinical. As the animal loses weight, it's actually losing its energy and fat stores. It's losing cellular water, it becomes depleted and the animal will then decline very quickly. Now, medications are important, um, so there's quite a few different types that are actually used. I'm not going to list any here because you should always go by what your vet prescribes. Now, you must stick to the dosage regime given for the medication. This is really important to make sure that we're able to disrupt the life cycle of the coccidium parasites and make sure they're killed off entirely. Now, just as importantly is the reptile hygiene, the cleaning, sanitizing, and removing fecal waste immediately. There really is little point in medicating the animal if you're not also going to be conducting a thorough clean and disinfect. So what we mean by this, obviously washing hands with every interaction. Now, you'll need to throw away all of your used substrate, throw away all the cheap furnishings, just basically throw away everything you can that didn't cost a lot of money or isn't permanently fixed. Everything else, you need to give it multiple thorough scrubs with veterinary F10 for cleaning to disinfect it. Now, things like your bowls, logs, hides need to be soaked and scrubbed in veterinary F10. They need to be thoroughly disinfected. 
Now we also do recommend leaving them outside in the sun off the ground so they're away from mites for about one to two days in the hot sun. Now if you're unable to do that you can also actually soak them um, inside of your bathtub for example or inside of your sink. Some people even bake some items in the oven. Make sure that whatever you're putting in your oven is actually safe to do so because we've heard some stories. Now for substrate just to get rid of it it's actually really helpful to be using paper towel or even puppy pads for the next few weeks just to make sure that the substrate stays hygienic and it stays sanitary it also is actually less cleaning for you so pick something that you can easily throw out and easily replace